But let's listen in to what Judge Mathis had to say about his pending divorce from his wife. And I'll give you my opinion in the end. Hey, Judge Mathis, how are you today, man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I want to ask... I'm not good, rather. It's the worst days of my life. How about that? Okay, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I wanted to ask you, you know, with news of the separation, how are you holding up? Not holding up very well. I would say the uh, other man. Maybe I'll be an uh, example for other men. Cautionary tale. Don't neglect your wife. You see how me at the airport now, flying out, as I have for 40 or for 25 years. My wife has been third. Serving the community, taping my show, having fun with friends. That's what happens, guys. Never be too busy or never have too much fun beyond your life. So I do want to ask, you know, the date of separation is listed back in July 17th. Mm -hmm. Has this been coming for some time now or was it something out the blue? Well, ever since we uh, started taping here in L.A., I committed to staying home more and being, making my wife more, more of a priority. But as you see, I haven't. I'm still here on the road. Yeah doing the same thing and uh, in terms of uh, going out into another city but it was I was gone for three weeks that's mm -hmm. what July 17th meant would you say you two are in a good place right now or able to maintain a friendship or oh yeah we're, we're still in the same house and we're maintaining a friendship and I'm trying to get my wife back Absolutely. try I have to show her that though mm -hmm. um, Hopefully I can show her while we're there together before, and hopefully she doesn't complete the process. But um, I'm changing in hopes that she will. I'm gonna get my wife back, how about okay, that? Absolutely. I just wanted to eliminate all the rumors too, that it's something about a baby or even me uh, molesting a child. It's none of that, I've just told you what it is. There were also, you know, kind of some rumors of any infidelity. Did you want to clear that up at all? You say it's solely neglect. Well, neglect, uh, can create suspicion, certainly. And if you're gone as much as I am, you have every right to suspect. You know, you go to work, you go serving the community around the country, then you go with your guys to sporting events around the country, you go to other events with, except without your wife hanging with you and enjoying herself with you. And so, yeah, she would have a right to suspect infidelity. But there was none of that going on. That's not the purpose. That's not the reason for this. I don't know if Judge Mathis is a Christian, is a believer in Christ. I don't know what his faith is or his foundation. But for those of us who are Christians and profess our, our faith and our, our need in Jesus Christ, we know that marriage is a covenant. Not only physically, but more so spiritually. When two are married, two become one. And I pray to God that Judge Mathis and his wife reconciles. I pray that um, he will become the servant leader that she yearns for and that he will continue to take accountability for his actions. I don't know what his choices were or his current choices or actions. I can't speak on that. But I knew I do know that the devil is busy and he's trying to destroy every marriage between a man and a woman. He's trying to destroy every example of a covenant marriage of a union that was ordained by God. And this is going to definitely serve as a cautionary tale to myself because oftentimes I neglect my wife. I'm not a servant leader. My love is not patient. My love is not kind. I'm easily triggered. And subconsciously, I think that because I provide financially, is going to offset everything else, all of my other flaws. And I'm being accountable to you. I I'm saying that as a Christian, as a believer in Christ, an imperfect believer in Christ, but as a man who needs to take accountability more for his actions. We all need to step up to the plate. And as married men, especially those of us who are Christians, who profess, who are not ashamed to profess our faith in Jesus Christ, 
we need to be kind to our wives. We need to be servant leaders to our wives and our kids. We cannot allow work, our businesses, our jobs, our finances, money, ego, pride to get in the way of the union and the covenant that God has blessed us with. Because it's easy for me to get caught up in worldly things, worldly thoughts, and put the most important thing that God has blessed me with to the side and not put as much effort into my wife as I put into other things, not put as much effort into my kids as I put in other things. The order, according to the word of God, is God, your wife, your kids. God, your wife, your spouse, and then your kids. Work, finances, material things, or low on the totem pole when it comes to kingdom living and having a kingdom vision. So I, I pray that Judge Mathis and his wife reconciles. I pray that his actions continue to speak louder than his words. Because like, my, like him, I'm on the road, not often as him, obviously, but I could check in more. I could be more present with my wife. It's one thing with being in the house with your wife and your kids, but it's a total... Another thing to be present and to be one and to empathize with your wife, to cater to her needs. Love is patient. Love is kind. And let this be a cautionary tale to all of the men, especially the men who profess their faith in Jesus Christ, that we can no longer neglect our wives. We cannot fall short of the covenant. And catering to our wives and our spouses. Because God has called us to, to do that. And no purpose, no passion is greater than the gift of marriage. A covenant marriage. So it doesn't matter what you got, what you have go, going on. The, the places that you're going. The business meetings that you're having. We need to have that covenant relationship with God first. And to not allow our flesh and our conscience to be seared to where we can't hear from God. To where we're no longer convicted of the things that we know we need to work on. So yes, this is a cautionary tale. And it's funny, not funny in, in that sense, but it's crazy how when we're going through a divorce, I've never been through a divorce before. I've only been married once. Or we're going through a separation. That's when the light bulb kicks in for most men. And they fight tooth and nail to retain the marriage. Now, Judge Mathis, I don't know his network, net worth, sorry, but motivation to save his marriage may be financially. But again, I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But I do know that when God forms a covenant of marriage, when a man makes the choice to marry a woman, I'm only speaking from a man's perspective, we have to love and cherish her like Christ loves us, like Christ loves the church. So again, let me know what you think of this. I believe just Mathis and his wife, Linda, uh, they married in 1985, and that's a long time. I've only been married, you know, for... For nine years, a little bit over nine years, and marriage is tough. It's the hardest thing, one of the hardest things that a man and a woman will ever do in, in their lifetime. And especially if you add kids to it, I believe they have two kids. Um, I don't know if they're teenagers or, you know, um, young adults. But I pray for them. I pray especially for his wife, Miss Linda. I pray that uh, she stands strong and she has safe people by her side that's speaking life and love into her. And I pray that they're, you know, in a, a Bible-believing church, in a small group, that couples can come alongside them and love on them. But at the end of the day, we have to step up as men, as godly men, 
trying to pursue what's right and what's holy. Again, not perfect, but knowing that we have to step up and do better. So again, let me know what you guys think of this. Thank you for your support. Always strive to remain set apart. Take care.